you mentioned Jerry Adams, and of course he's, he's been here before, um, and you soldiered together, some would say literally, down through the years. <clears throat> You're, you seem very comfortable in talking about your involvement in the IRA and being a member of the IRA. Why hasn't Jerry, Jerry Adams ever admitted being a member of the IRA? Well, I, I never talk about who's on the IRA or, who, or who's not on the IRA. But you do know who's there. who was. Well, Jerry Adams and I, uh, whenever we were trying to get the IRA to call uh, the ceasefire in 1994, mm. uh, actually met with the IRA, and this is on the public record, on a number of occasions. But is, is Jerry Adams a member, or was he a member of the IRA? I never talk about who was or who wasn't. So you're not going to say no? Uh, well, I never talk about it. But if I asked you to say no or yes, you couldn't, could you? What I'm saying is that I never, ever talk about who was in the IRA or who wasn't in the IRA. That's not what I do. And it isn't even a productive line of discussion because... I think, it's inter I think people are interested, actually. Martin. Well, let me tell you this. There wouldn't have been this peace process without Jerry Adams. No, that's not the point. Jerry, the, point well, is, is, is the, no, point. the point is admitting I to think it is the being point. a member of an organisation. A lot of people on this island are curious to know whether... Or why he can't say, yes, I well, was there. Times have changed. I'm a peacemaker now. I, I don't think the people of West Belfast are that curious about whether well, or not Jerry Adams was in the area. Well, I was thinking about the island, as you know, the largest, as a united island. He gets the largest vote of any elected yeah, representative not arguing that. on the island of Ireland because not arguing people, that. people trust him. They see him as an Irish Republican. Anyway, look, there's no point in going on because, as you, you, made, you made your point on that, so we'll, we'll move on okay. or we'll, we can only draw conclusions. Um, meanwhile, Jerry Adams is taking a trip down south uh, soon to run in the general election here. Do you see him uh, being elected? Well, I certainly have a considerable degree of confidence that he will be elected. I was part of that decision. Yes. I think it's uh, very important that the leader of Sinn Féin uh, is elected to a constituency in uh, the south and is full-time in that constituency and in Leinster House. And, and I, what would be Sinn Féin's I, major approach to fix our very sick and ailing economy? Well, I think that, uh, you know, quite clearly we have a situation with the IMF and the European Central Bank have come in here. Yes. And as, as a result of that, uh, we have seen economic sovereignty taken away from us. So do you say tax, spend? What, where, no, where? no, I say we have uh, produced our proposals. Yes. They've been costed by the Department of Finance and by very experienced economists. Yes. Many of whom believe that uh, it is the best approach. Uh, for example, the uh, situation where we do believe that uh, four billion uh, could be uh, raised uh, by tax by taxing the wealthy, okay. where seven uh, billion could be raised by a one-off uh, award from the National uh, Pension uh, Fund, where other funds could be raised to, for example, in the course of 2011, pay off something like 4.6 uh, billion, uh, reducing the deficit to around 10%. Can I ask you about uh, the fact that I've spoken in the seat that you're in now in the past 18 months to Enda Kenny, Putative Taoiseach, all things going the way the polls suggest. I've spoken to Eamon Gilmore, again, putative Taunashta. And both men, leaders of the Labour Party and the Fine Gael Party, have said that they will not do business with Sinn Féin, which is an unusual thing, I suppose, in some ways, because the numbers, if we were to follow them, suggest that Sinn Féin may well play a, a role in the shake-up of the number. Why are they so reluctant to do business with Sinn Féin here when they seem to be quite happy to watch you go into government the likes of Ian Paisley. What is their problem as you see it? Pr probably they know that I'm reluctant to do business with uh, Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil <laughs> and would not be prepared to go into government with either of them. Yeah. I noticed there a very stark uh, omission of the Labour Party. So you're happy to do business with them but they don't seem to want to dance with you, Mark. Well, I think there's a very real uh, probability that the political landscape of this part of our island is going to change fundamentally at the next general election. And I do believe that for the first time in the history of this state, there is a very real prospect of a government being formed Will they have other than uh, involving Fianna Fáil or Fine fin Gael in it. Oh, well, indeed. So you might actually uh, circumvent Fianna Gael's involvement in, in a future government. No, what I'm saying very clearly is there's a very real opportunity for the people of Ireland. And I mean, I, I canvassed extensively yes. in the Donegal South West by election for Pierre Storty. Uh, talked to real people in their shops and in their houses, people who believed that Pierce uh, was the only person in the stand in the constituency that knew what he was talking about. And it was quite clear from that election result in Donegal uh, South West that a substantial proportion of Fianna Fáil voters decided that they were going to vote for Sinn Féin. Do you see United Ireland happening in your lifetime? 
Well, I believe that I'm in a, a process which is going to inevitably lead to Irish reunification, but that can only happen by purely peaceful and democratic means. And I have dedicated my life to making that happen. In your lifetime, United Ireland? Yeah, certainly I think it can yeah. happen in my lifetime. Yeah, I intend How to long live, do you intend I to live for? I intend to live for a very, very long time. <laughs> well, I just, and just on that point, yeah. and, and diverting a wee bit from Go on. serious matters, I have a friend who's 104 years old, Molly Gallagher from Ardra, and she's presently ill in Larry Kenny okay. Hospital, and I want to send her, we wish her well tonight. speedy recovery. And, yeah. I, I, are you still in touch with Ian Paisley? Instead. Yeah, and you became it was the most unlikely friendship, if you like. Would it, would it be fair to call it a friendship, or was it a marriage of convenience? Well, I think initially Ian uh, had, a, had a big decision to take as to yeah. whether or not he was going to come into government uh, with Sinn Fein. Remember, up until March uh, 2007, we never had a conversation yes. about anything. But whenever we sat down together, one of the first things Ian Paisley said to me was, "Martin, we can rule ourselves." We don't need these direct rule ministers coming over from England telling us what to do. Well, you're both agreeing on that one. Will you welcome Queen Elizabeth if she decides to choose to visit this, uh, the Republic of Ireland? I haven't even given it any thought because I don't know if she's going to visit it or not. That's a matter for now, the Martin, President to see whether she's going to invite now, her. Now, Martin, that's a yes or no now. Well, let Come me on, tell you. Don't mind Jerry and the well, IRA. That's a yes you, or no. Let me tell you how I feel about the British uh, royal family. Uh, and I'm uh, uh, in no way bitter in terms of uh, my thought processes are where we need to go on this island because I think that we've done a mountain of work and Peter Robinson and I and Ian Paisley have worked very closely together for the betterment of all the people of this island and yes. I think that's been accepted generally. So what's the answer? And, well the answer is this, is that the British royal family for example are commanders in chief of the, of the parachute regiment. Right. I, I have never heard either Queen Elizabeth or uh, her, any of her sons uh, say anything about what happened uh, I, in the I, course of uh, the murder of 14 people on, on the streets of my city. You want an apology from the royal family before you're in a position to categorically welcome the Queen here to the Republic of Ireland? No, well, I mean... Uh, that seems uh, to be what you're saying. Well, qu quite apart from that... But I can, uh, can uh, I fairly deduce that from what you've just said? No, you can fairly deduce from that that I, I would not be uh, enamoured, uh, for want of a better word, by a visit from uh, the Queen of England. I, I'm not a monarchist. I understand that, Mark, now, in fairness. <laughs> You've made that point down through the years yeah. uh, more than once. Okay. <laughs> we have to leave it there. I, I, I know you're a keen fisherman. I think in a week like this, you're probably glad you're not a golfer. Yeah, I think sometimes people should consider what sport they take up fishing. And fishermen and women are, are much more close mouth than uh, a lot of golfers. Yeah, I take that point. It's been good to see you. Thanks for coming to see us Thanks, this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank Mark you. McGuinness. Thank you. Okay.